for more on the G20, we bring in Eugene Chavzowski joining us now. He's a geopolitical analyst, and you're going to help us better understand uh, what went right and what went wrong at the G20. So let's start with the successes and potential surprises. Um, give us, give us, uh, let us know where we're at in terms of expectations. Sure. So I think in terms of successes, just the fact that uh, President Xi and Biden had a meeting that seemed to go relatively well and addressed certainly the, the areas of tension, but in a, in a broadly constructive way. The two leaders discussed climate change and even um, have plans for Secretary Blinken to make his first visit to China uh, early next year. So while there were some, you know, certainly fears of, of a growing confrontation between the U.S. and China, that relationship seems to have been managed relatively well um, at, the, at, the, um, at the G20 summit. In terms of surprises, I would say, just as your previous segment mentioned, the war in Ukraine is certainly overshadowing a lot of the global issues that were discussed, you know, whether that's climate change or energy and food security, even the, the, the fact that the missiles that landed in Polish territory were not Russian just goes to show that the Ukrainian conflict is still very much active and has the potential to scuttle any kind of global cooperation efforts, uh, particularly in the economic sphere. Yeah. I mean, look, it, it's been essentially the headline for the majority of the year, right, what's happening in Ukraine. And you have to think that all these countries, everyone's impacted in one way or another, both politically or economically. And they must be discussing this, you know, quietly behind the scenes, trying to figure out a way how to, how to end this conflict, don't you think? It's true. There are, you know, diplomatic negotiations that are happening. Um, and we even saw President Zelensky of Ukraine put out a peace uh, proposal, essentially, uh, a 10-point proposal, uh, which was quickly rejected by Russia. But it still nevertheless shows that there, are, that there is an opportunity to settle the, the conflict. However, where we're at right now, th those negotiations are happening, unfortunately, largely on the battlefield. And I expect that to take place at least in the, the near to midterm. Now, the conflict is rippling out in different areas, but even things like the Black Sea Grain Initiative shows that there is room for compromise and there is room for uh, potential progress to be made even as the military phase uh, is underway. A lot of people are expecting, you know, China's role to continue to grow as their economy grows and as their influence grows. So there is this underlying expectation of leadership much of the world is expecting out of China. How do you think China did and, and perhaps what should be expected out of them? Well, China certainly played a very important role at the summit. As you mentioned, there was a lot of economic deals that were discussed and, and agreed to with many of the uh, with with Indonesia and other Southeast Asian countries. Uh, but China, like other uh, countries, big and small, is very much impacted by the the Ukrainian conflict, which has you know it's it's global in terms of its impact. So, as much as China has made progress in in terms of economic uh, relations and diplomatic relations. It still doesn't have complete control over the, uh, or very much control at all, quite frankly, over the course of the Ukraine conflict, which will have continue to have global uh, repercussions. You know, the other thing that has not been mentioned yet is, and it's been a really big deal, and that is the the pandemic, right? Because parts of the world are coming out of it or dealing with it, and there's other parts of the world that are still deciding what to do. Specifically, you know, China. I mean, that has had a impact on supply chains around the world. Was that a topic of discussion, and if so, what was talked about? Well, certainly the, the economic element of the pandemic, which we've seen rising inflation, uh, food, energy, things of that nature, uh, the pandemic still continues to have you know, a, a, an important uh, influence over that. While some countries have come out of it, more or less, others are still facing it. And, and China's um, you know, response still continues to play a major impact on that front as well. So this is something that will continue to play out. And depending on how the pandemic evolves, we'll have that kind of economic impact in addition to the other measures that I've already mentioned. All right. Um, great insight on um, with all these world leaders all getting together. It's always interesting. Eugene, appreciate it. Thank you.